Has it already been two weeks? Well, hello everyone, I'm Tatiana Thompson. This is episode 46 of Brombird News. Did you know that hummingbirds were already migrating? Check out these maps. I was reading Ontario birding news and one of the articles made me realize that I had never talked to you about bird baths in the winter. Well, that's because I don't have one. I have several of them set up in the summer, but not in the winter. Let me explain why. Well, first of all, I get a lot of emails from people, especially from around here, asking me why they're finding dead birds in their backyard. Well, the first thing I ask them is whether they have a heated bird bath or not. And sure enough, they do. And for the second reason, I would actually like to quote Brian Morin from Ontario Birding. Here's what he writes. The Canadian Wildlife Federation notes, birds see open water as a cue that it's mild enough to bathe. In our very cold winters, this can be fatal to birds. Once birds are wet, the water quickly freezes on their feet, legs and feathers. Canadian birds have adapted to getting their water from snow and ice and will manage without an added source. And that's absolutely true. I watch blue jays and cardinals help themselves to ice and snow all the time. So I'm not too concerned about them being too thirsty in the winter. However, if you live in southern states, water is a necessity. Let's have a look what Dr. Bird has done in Baja. Well, here we are in Baja, California, sir, at Casa Peregrino looking at a whole new suite of birds, and more important, trying to learn what works and what doesn't work for attracting them to our backyard. Since we live in a highly arid environment where fresh water is a premium, the very first thing we did was set up a flower pot saucer on an upside down bucket in our back patio. I thought the local birds would go nuts over this new source of drinking and bathing water in such a hot, and hot place, but boy was I wrong. When not a single bird came to use it after several days, we figured that perhaps we had placed it too close to our patio door. After all, the birds down here in Mexico are not used to being fed by folks, and thus they tend to be a wee bit shy. So we moved the saucer and bucket further away down on the sand in some shade, and not too far from some vegetative cover to fly into should a hawk suddenly appear. We also knew to add a hose drip to create enough water movement to catch a bird's eye. Bingo! Our very first bather was our local northern mockingbird who really enjoyed his bath. It was such a delight to see. I'm sure that if we can install some kind of a water feature such as a small pond or even just a larger bird bath in our backyard, it would be just as effective as putting up feeders to bring loads of birds to our property. Well, we had a bit of a discussion going on on our Facebook page whether to take your feeders down or not when birds of prey show up looking for a quick lunch. Let's see what David has to say about that. Apparently, there's been a bit of a debate about whether one should take down their feeders if a bird of prey suddenly shows up in the yard. My view is that there's no need to remove them. There's basically four raptorial bird species that might frequent one's bird feeders in North America. The Cooper's hawk, Sharpshin hawk, Merlin, and American kestrel. The Cooper's Hawk and Sharpshin are the most observed. They're both designed to catch birds in short sprints. Because of DDT poisoning and persecution, these hawks almost went extinct. Now they've invaded suburbia big time, partly due to bird feeders and protection from being persecuted. It saddens me to hear that folks feeding birds don't want them in their yards. Hawks and falcons are all part of nature's food web, and they have a right to eat too. One should just sit back, enjoy the drama, and consider themselves lucky. It's not every day that one gets to see this aspect of nature. And yes, I know it's hard to see one's precious feeder birds get nailed by a hawk, but songbirds only live about one to two years anyway. Finally, keep in mind that two of the greatest threats to our songbirds are not the raptors, but windows and free-ranging outdoor cats. It's always been a question whether animals can dream or not, and for the past 20 years, scientists have known that the brain patterns of zebra finches change while they're asleep. But the recent study shows us that not only do they dream, they actually sing while sleeping. Zebra finches listen to other birds' songs during the day and then practice those songs while asleep. 
Scientists played uh, recordings of bird songs to sleeping finches, and what they observed is that the vocal muscles of these birds were moving as if the birds were actually singing. Well, I guess that could explain why their songs are so complex. Well, it turns out it's not just us humans that enjoy cruising. A New Zealand family was absolutely devastated when they were preparing for their cruise and their pet cockatoo, Harry, escaped the house. Well, while the family ended up on one ship, Harry landed on another ship owned by the same cruise line. Because Harry was equipped with a microchip, the crew quickly realized that it wasn't just a wild bird. And after a little bit of research, they tracked down the owners. While the family was absolutely thrilled to have their pet back at home, they were a little bit jealous when they found out that Harry had been upgraded to a first-class cabin. I know lately I've been talking a lot about this, but I just can't get over it. Well, last week, uh, 513 conservation groups from all 50 states joined together to try and convince Congress that the revisions to the Migratory Bird Treaty Act were dangerous and irresponsible. Changes like these would allow companies like BP to deny any responsibility for the millions of bird deaths that were caused by the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in 2010. And they would also protect new oil drilling and mining companies for being responsible for killing birds. Well, if you want to make a difference, visit abcbirds.org and sign a petition. I already have. Well, thank you all for voicing your opinion about the categories for the rest of the year. We decided to post them on the website and we will also remind you about the upcoming category every month. Well, we had the hardest time picking winners on this photo contest, and I can tell you that the winner is a true northern bird. Let's check out the top five in public voting. And the winner is, I'm not surprised, is Peg Runyon. Peg, congratulations, your pictures are always so amazing. Now let's check out the top staff picks. And the winner is Mark Robinson. Mark, your blue jet does look rather cold. Mark is actually retiring from his career and he's super excited to have more free time to take pictures of birds. Congratulations, Mark. Next month is eagles and hawks, but not owls. Good luck, everyone. Well, another reminder, please ID your birds when you submit pictures to our photo contest and let me know what you think about heated bird baths. I'll see you in our forum. Goodbye, everyone.